What do you think about a slice of pizza right now? Yeah. Well, most likely the answer to that question depends on how hungry you are, of course. So if you had a big English breakfast this morning, perhaps that slice of pizza doesn't look very appealing. On the other hand, if you haven't eaten anything all day and you're about to, you know, get ready for lunch and perhaps already have a bit of an appetite, that slice of pizza will look really good. So how you feel about that slice of pizza at the moment is completely dependent on how you feel, how, what kind of internal state you're experiencing. Are you hungry or not? So many judgments about things like a slice of pizza, about people, about places, they're highly subjective. It's completely dependent on how you happen to be feeling at that moment. So that's all subjective and down to what's going on with you at that time. Now, in contrast, there are other things where we have to be very objective, where we have to look at things as they really are. So, for example, if I look at how wide is the stage, I need to be accurate about it. Or if you, for example, if you take a look at the person sitting to your right at the moment, just have a look at them, look at how far away they're sitting from you. It's a precise distance, right? So you can measure that distance with a measuring tape, and it's, well, that's a, a reflection of reality. So there are subjective judgments and objective judgments. But what I will try to argue is that, in fact, they're all the same in a way. They all depend on how you happen to be feeling at a given moment. And that's what my research is all about. So to give you an example, let's imagine you're standing in front of a steep hill, like one of our participants. So you're literally outside somewhere, at the base of a hill, and I ask you, how steep is that hill? So if you take, you know, zero degrees as being completely flat versus 90 degrees being like a wall, you tell me in degrees how steep is that hill. So it's a fairly simple task, and of course your answer should be simply a reflection of reality. You should see it, you should see the hill as it really is. Well, I'm arguing that actually what you think is objective reality around you may in fact, just like that slice of pizza, be entirely, your perception may be entirely colored by how you happen to be feeling at that moment. Why? Because how you relate to your, uh, your environment around you is a function of how you could act in that environment. In other words, how easy or how difficult it is for you at any given moment to get up that hill. You see the hill, that big obstacle in front of you, as a reflection of your own internal state. So how do we measure that? Well, let's imagine you're a participant in one of my experiments. And I give you one of these two glasses. Now, if you have a look at them, they will look exactly identical. And that's what they look to participants as well. What you don't know, and what our participants also didn't know, that this glass actually has a ton of sugar in it. So it's a juice drink that has, well, like most of such drinks, sugar in it. Whereas this version is the equivalent that only has sweetener in it. So one version gives you lots of calories, glucose, and therefore energy, whereas the other version does not. So you would have had one of these drinks before I ask you to stand at that hill. And, well, what we find, this is work with my collaborators, Danny Prophet and John Sedra, is that if you had that glass of the sugary drink, you will say the hill is less steep. So that seemingly objective slant, that inclination of the hill, changes, or you see it differently, as a function of how full of energy you are at the moment, literally, whether you're, you know, ready to go and you could potentially get up that hill, although in reality you're only standing there and judging the incline, but it's as if you're imagining how easy or difficult it would be to get up that hill. So if you're full of energy, that hill is not very steep. So, now, you might think, well, if that's the case, that, you know, 
how I see a hill changes as a function of how I happen to be feeling at that moment, how come I don't notice it? How come, how come the world isn't just warping before my eyes and looking all strange and confusing? Well, the answer is that, of course, it's not the world that's changing. The hill is still the same. It's, it's no different than what it was, well, whenever you weren't there. It's how you relate to the hill. Just like that slice of pizza is no different as a function of whether you're hungry or not, it's how you relate to it, and that's really what our research is all about. So you see a hill or some obstacle ahead of you as a function of how well you would be able to cope with that challenge. So that's one example. Now, I'm a social psychologist, and what I'm really interested in is people how people relate to one another in various ways, and in particular, when it comes to this idea of the perception of the physical environment, whether people may play a role in that context as well. And I discussed this idea at a conference with a colleague, um, Kent Harbour, and we thought of how, how we know from social psychology that a really important research, uh, resource really is is other people, how we can rely on those who we feel close to. It's called social support. So social support is a source of resource. Um, it's something, it's basically the idea that we can rely on other people and they help us. So we tested whether that, you know, that sense of having somebody there with you to take on a challenge, whether that would also literally change perception. So we had a study where participants literally had a friend by their side, and they were judging the hill. And in that context, that hill looked less steep compared to participants who were alone. So it's not just kind of the physiological level of energy that you may have through you know, sugar, glucose, and so on at a given moment, but also on a more psychological level, how you feel, how well you feel supported by other people. And we then wondered, well, is it, is it about actually literally having somebody besides you to help you, perhaps even help you literally get up that hill, or is it more psychological? So we did another study, and, well, in fact, we can try out that experiment right now. So I'm going to divide up the room in half. So all of you on this side here, I would like you to close your eyes. Okay. Close your eyes, I said. <laughs> okay. And then, now think of the most important person in your life. The person who's most special to you, who's always there for you. Whenever you needed them, they were there to help you, and, you know, there is nobody more important than that particular person. Now hold that thought. Hold that thought while our other experimental condition gets different instructions. Now please also close your eyes. Okay, now you think of a person who at some point used to be very close to you, but no longer is. Somebody who betrayed your confidence, somebody who really disappointed you, and who, well, you can't really rely on. Right, now everybody, you can open your eyes again and have a look at the hill. What you should find, and what we find in our work, is that participants who were instructed to thought of a special significant other who's really supportive of them, they found the hill to be less steep than those who thought of a person who had betrayed them. So it's simply bringing to mind that you have certain resources available, people around you who can help you, for example. So, and it's all suggesting that when you look at the physical environment, which is objectively specified, a hill has a certain angle, a distance has a certain measurement. It's not as objective, or reality is not as objective as you might think, but it's a function of how you happen to be feeling at that moment. Now, we also looked at that in a different context. My PhD student, Unhi Li, she's very interested in power, social power, which is defined as having resources, controlling resources, uh, for other people. So if you're the boss of a company, you're in charge of salaries, you're in charge of workloads. In other words, you have power. If you're 
uh, if you're the employee, you have much less power, you're dependent on your boss, and so on. So, in one of our studies, we manipulated that idea of, you know, either feeling in charge and having access to resources or not, being powerful on one hand versus being powerless. And what we did in that context, we didn't use a hill slant, but instead we had people deal with a burden, a physical burden, like to lift up a heavy box. So we had boxes filled with books. We asked participants to stretch out their arms and we placed the box on their arms and said, okay, roughly how heavy is it? How heavy is this burden? And tell us in, in pounds. And we found that participants who had previously thought of a time where they felt powerful, where they were in charge of things, where other people were relying on them, they found that box literally less heavy than those who had, who had thought of a time where they had no control and where, where there wasn't much they can do, where they felt powerless. So all this suggests that how you see seemingly objective properties of the world around you, such as the slant of a hill, or a physical burden that you need to lift, that is a function of how you happen to be feeling at that moment. And that's important in, well, several ways. For me as a psychologist, it's, it's fascinating because it means that there is no such thing as objective reality. Re I mean, if, you know, if even the most basic properties of space are shaped by my own internal state, then that means, well, it's always very subjective, whatever I'm seeing. And what it means to you, in a more general sense, if you think of, well, the burdens of life, not perhaps the literal burdens that you have to, 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 to lift up, but some, perhaps a burden that you may feel on your shoulders or an obstacle in front of you, whether it's a real hill or perhaps just some challenge, some obstacle that you're perceiving. There are three ways in which you can deal with them. So, on the most basic level, you replenish your source of energy. Have that sugary drink, have that chocolate bar. That's, you know, of course, adding to the calories which you may want to avoid. So, if you don't want to do that, you could instead do one of the other two strategies. Simply use your mind to bring to bear the resources that you have. So, for example, think of the person who's always there besides you, not perhaps literally, but who's always supportive of you, and think of how you can rely on that person while you're ch uh, faced with a challenge, or think back to a time where you felt powerful, where you had control, and where you were in charge of the situation. So all these ways are literally ways in which you can change how the world looks to you.